What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In today's video, we're going to be covering a powerful concurrency feature in Swift known as actors. So in this video, we're going to be covering what they are, why they matter, and what problems they solve. And we're also going to be diving into some practical code examples to get some real life examples of this stuff and how we might be able to use them and integrate them into our projects. So what is an actor? Well, it's essentially a concurrency primitive introduced in Swift 5.5 that help us manage shared mutable state safely. So you can think of actors as similar to classes, but with a slight twist. They automatically handle thread safety for us. So if we take a brief look at a quick little code example here, we have two uh, components here, a counter and a safe counter. One is a class, one is an actor. They both have a value property, but we're gonna see how the actor ensures that no two threads can access or modify the value property at the same time. This makes our code safer and eliminates issues like data races. And before we dive into the code, I wanna get a visual representation of what task execution can look like both synchronously and asynchronously and discuss what concurrent access or data races might look like in this context. So guys, if we run tasks synchronously, that means one task has to complete before the other can start. And typically we don't run into problems with concurrent access or thread safety when we run tasks synchronously. So imagine task one modified a value on a class and then task two modified it and then task three modified it, right? We don't ever have to worry about two tasks simultaneously manipulating or accessing data at the same time. Whereas in the next option, if we run tasks asynchronously, we can run into problems with thread safety. And this is what actors are going to help us solve, right? Imagine that we have some property or value being manipulated on a class and task one and task two end up manipulating or trying to access that property at the exact same time. That is going to call, cause thread safety issues and can cause data race conditions. And we're gonna see how actors can help us solve this problem uh, over non-thread safe uh, primitive types like classes. So let's go ahead and dive into Xcode now and get started with some code examples. So with Xcode opened up guys, I've created an actors module here and we are gonna start this off by creating a class and it's going to be represent something like a bank account. And we're going to simulate what potential thread safety issues could look like with potentially like depositing or transferring money from one bank account to another. So we're gonna go ahead and create a var called balance, which is going to just be some double. And we're gonna say init. And we're gonna have two functions here, one to deposit money, which is some amount, which is a double. And we're gonna say balance plus equals amount, right? If we deposit money, we just add to our balance. And then we're gonna have a function to transfer money, which is some amount, which is a double, and this is going to be to some other account, which is another bank account. And in this function, guys, we're just gonna say balance equals balance minus the amount, and we're gonna say other account dot deposit amount. And we're also gonna add a simple guard check here to make sure we have sufficient funds. So we're gonna say guard balance is greater than or equal to our amount, else print insufficient uh, funds return. Let's just add a function to get our balance, which will return a double, and we're just gonna say return the balance here. And that looks good. And now guys, let's go ahead and implement this inside of our view and see how this could cause potential thread safety issues. And then we're gonna go ahead and see how an actor can help us solve that issue and how we're gonna need to modify our code to implement that. So I'm gonna create two accounts here and account one will have a balance of 100, account two will have a balance of 50. And then I'm gonna create a simple button that just initiates a transfer, guys. So we're gonna go here and paste this in here here. So we have a button that says click me and it just fires off two tasks uh, and it's going to transfer $30 from account one to account two and another task that's going to transfer $50 from account one to account two. And I have some print statements here so we can go ahead and just hit click me and see what happens, guys. And we notice that everything looks good, right? These print statements are accurately reflecting the balance of each account. So it appears as if there is no problem or never would be a problem here. But 
This is not always going to be the case because of the fact that this bank account is a class and it does not guarantee thread safety. So the reason I added or created two tasks here, guys, was to attempt to simulate concurrent access to the balance property on our bank account. So the transfer guy modifies the balance and so does the deposit function, right? So we have two functions here that are potentially modifying the balance property here, which could lead to thread safety issues. Now, within a Swift UI view context, these tasks are serialized. So right now it doesn't appear to be a problem. But worst case scenario, you could end up where you have two parallel calls to transfer, which would be called on the same bank account instance, which could not only lead to potential thread safety issues, but could cause uh, errors in our business logic as well, where we obviously don't want someone to be able to transfer funds they don't have in their account. So if we modify these values a little bit, let's imagine we have like 100 in account one and zero in account two, and we try to execute a transfer of $80 from account one to account two uh, twice or simultaneously. So imagine these tasks get executed in parallel. Imagine the user accidentally maybe clicked a button twice, or there are two different components that are trying to execute this transfer for $80. So let's imagine task one calls the transfer function. It passes the balance check, says, hey, we have enough money. And let's imagine this process here, these two lines of code, takes like two seconds to complete. And let's imagine then that the second task or task two starts execution of this transfer function before these processes complete. So we now have parallel execution of this function and it's once again going to pass the balance check because it's, the other transfer has not yet completed. So it's gonna say, hey, we have enough money and it's going to initiate a second transfer. So that would be 80 bucks twice, which would total $160. And this account would end up with a balance of negative $60. And this is going to cause you all kinds of problems if you are running a bank, right? You don't want people to be able to send money and make their account balance negative. ...of our problem with thread safety and concurrent access to properties within a class, guys. Classes are inherently not thread safe. They are not sendable. And we can now implement the use of an actor to make sure that this problem doesn't occur. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I change this guy to actor. And guys, we are going to now notice that we have some errors popping up and some warnings popping up. So let's take a look at what we need to do to resolve these. So if we look at this error, we see that a call to an actor isolated instance method deposit in a synchronous actor isolated context. So basically guys, we need to go here and make sure that we say await. And we need to make this function asynchronous and you'll notice that error goes away. So guys, now we are gonna go down here and mark this with await, and we're gonna mark this with await. And in our print statements, we are also going to need to say await account1.getBalance and await account2.getBalance, await account1.getBalance and await account2.getBalance. So basically with the use of an actor, guys, anytime we are trying to utilize that component, we need to mark it with the await keyword, which effectively makes sure that we don't run into problems with parallel task execution or concurrent thread access. It's essentially going to wait until this process completes before another one can begin. So it serializes our tasks in a way. So guys, let's go ahead and bring our console up and print this and just see what happens. And you'll notice that everything is fine, right? I mean, it, it would be fine with the use of a class, but the purpose of this example was to try to simulate concurrent access or parallel access with two tasks running simultaneously. But within a SwiftUI view context, it's pretty difficult to make that happen. I believe these tasks are serialized, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen in other concurrent environments. So effectively guys, actors make concurrent programming much safer by ensuring that only one task accesses the actor state at a time. They're especially valuable in situations where your tasks truly run in parallel, right? So like I said, it's hard to simulate that, but uh, the purpose of this example was to try to do that. And once again, guys, essentially, every time we try to use the actor component, we have to mark it with this await keyword, which guarantees that we don't have pr uh, processes executing concurrently or at the same time. So guys, there are obviously some downsides with actors as well, and it's important to know when to use them and when not to. So let's go ahead and hop into some of the downsides of actors before we wrap this video up. Main issue with actors is definitely going to be performance overhead. 
Actors serialize access to their state, meaning that only one task can interact with their properties or methods at a time, which can introduce a major performance bottleneck if many tasks need to access the actor frequently. And this bleeds into our next point where we get async only access, and that creates a suspension point in the code execution every time the actor is used. And guys, another downside is that actors cannot inherit from classes or other actors. They can only inherit from protocols. So it's important to know when to use actors and when not to. Personally and honestly, I have yet to use an actor. There are other methods of ensuring <clears throat> concurrent access or thread safety is not a problem in your code with things like async let and task groups. So while actors are incredibly powerful and do help us solve certain problems, it's important to evaluate when and where you need to use them in your app. As with any tool, understanding their limitations is key to using them effectively. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, this is a part of our Swift Concurrency Masterclass. So if you guys want to check out that full course, it's available on the website. The link for that is in the description. If you guys are taking this as part of the course itself, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you check out all of our other awesome stuff on the YouTube channel that we have there for free and obviously all of our other courses that we have on the website. So thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.